What's up everybody and how's it going and welcome back to another video today of Cephalo Ed. In this video guys, I'm going to be giving guys a little presentation about an in-depth video of chromatophores and I am super super excited to do this for you guys and I really want to thank and give a big shout out to Alexis again who has suggested another video for me and it's actually this video, the in-depth about chromatophores and i'm so grateful that you have been suggesting videos it's really awesome and just again thank you so much for that it's making me really happy back to in-depth video of chromatophores that's what i'm going to show you guys for today and it's just truly awesome and before we get into this video i want you guys to please like this video let's try and get eight likes for this video that'd be absolutely awesome and please hit that subscribe button and that notification button for future videos. And so that's it, and let's get right to the video. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The magnificent and marvelous chromatophores. Probably my favorite thing out of the whole entire cephalopods is the chromatophores. And if they really didn't have chromatophores, they, they would be calamari. They wouldn't have anything to protect themselves with and this they use this to protect themselves by camouflage into their surroundings and if they didn't have this they would just they would be very visible and eaten pretty quickly so what you guys are looking at here is actually a squid and i don't want you guys to focus on the eye even though it's really cool but i want you guys to focus around it and what you guys are looking at is is that these are actually the chromatophores and you'll see that there are some a variety of sizes of chromatophores and these help them by changing the, ver the sizes of the chromatophores this helps them with really having an area of where they want to represent the most color and then another area where they don't want to represent most of that color and you can see that here they have a bunch of color here in the eye and on top of the mantle here in the head but then as you get down it's mostly white this one I rep represent most of its color, but it is not in water, so it is going to be white. It's going to lose a lot of its color. But it's a, it's a truly miraculous ability that cephalopods have. It's just, it's just truly remarkable. And <clears throat> so let's talk about what are the chromatophores. So chromatophores are like tiny elastic bags of pigment surrounded by a star-shaped ar arrangement of muscles. So for those who don't quite understand that, I'll give you guys a pretty cool visual visualization. So I want you guys to imagine that you have a ball of slime in your hand. And I want in V10 you have it just in your hand like this. And so that ball of slime is going to be a chromatophore. So right now it is contracted. It's not expanding and that's where all the, all the colors, pigment is stored in there but it's not expanded yet to really show that color. So your muscles, that the muscles that control the chromatophores, when you stretch out the slime, you're gonna notice that there's gonna be a lot more color there because you are stretching it out and you'll see that it's covering more area too. And that's what the chromatophores do. do. So the muscles that surround the chromatophores are controlled by the nerves. So they are neurologically controlled and that is what helps them camouflage and change color and move the chromatophores in an instant or to expand the pigment into a large disc. Each of the hundred thousands of chromatophores can be controlled individually by the coleage, which helps it have a variety of patterns and hold them at a prolonged time or change in an instant. So it's really, really incredible how they're able to hold these chromatophores at a long period of time or short time it's uh it's truly a gift for these cephalopods for them to do this and also some animals amphibians and reptiles they do have chromatophores so like some reptiles we could just go with the chameleon they do have chromatophores but they do change a lot slower than they do than cephalopods so Cephalopods really have taken the chromatophores and changing color to the extreme. Like, like what I said before, um, like last video, how cuttlefish have taken that throne for changing color. But 
for all the cephalopods, they have taken the throne for changing color really fast and matching the surroundings perfectly, even though other animals do that. But to me, I think these guys just took that to the extreme and just really improved on it and improvised. And so on the next slide, I want to show you guys a really cool drawing that I made of a chromatophore. It is truly an outstanding piece of art, I think. It's the chromatophore, it's um, it's going to be a little weird at first because chromatophores are weird looking cells, but they're, it's a pretty simple cell. But even though it looks simple on the outside, there's a lot of stuff that's going on the inside that has to help it function. So let's get right into it. So here's my chromatophore, drawing a chromatophore. So let's start right in the middle. This is where the pigment granules are. So right in this name, just take out the granules, you already have the pigment. So that obviously tells you this is where the pigment is stored. And then you got the cytoelastic sacculus. So when you take that cytio and sacculus, you got elastic. So what that means is it's an elastic piece that surrounds this pigment granule. And when this chromatophore expands, this elastic, the cytoelastic sacculus is going to expand and that's where the pigment will fill in that area. And then when a chromatophore expands, all those cytoelastic sacculus will expand everywhere and a lot more color will be represented. And then right here we have our primary enfolding or known as pouches. That is where the cytoelastic sacculus goes in and covers a lot of area in the chromatophore. And then inside we have the nucleus, which is, that's the whole main part. That is what makes that cell. And then in here, the, these little arrangements are uh, mainly the muscles, but also there's some cells on there that really help this function as well. So these things right here, these little arms, they radical muscles. This is like what I said before for that visualization. These are basically your fingers on the, the ball of slime, and this is where you're going to take it and you can expand it or contract it. So that's what these basically are. And on top of that, we have these glial cells or glial cells. And what these do, these support the cell in the nervous system. So these are a really big part for the chromatophores because like when I mentioned earlier, these are this is a neurocontrolled cell. And glials do not conduct electrical impulses impulses and they sur surround and provide support for the neurons that travel in and through the cell. And this is, is a really fascinating thing and it helps this function a lot. And then we just have the nerve that goes through. And so now I want to talk to you guys about the skin layer. So yes, cephalopods do have chromatophores that change in colors. So we have orange, yellow, red, brown, and black. But even though they have these chromatophores and they are very important, but they do need some help because they only have a just a few variety of colors. So chromatophores are on the top layer of the coleoids. In the second layer, we have a rhodophores. So this have a, other colors that will as well. We have purple, yellow, green, blue, and silver. And so a rhodophore, so if you guys remember from last week's video about the cuttlefish, I talked about how the Australian, giant Australian cuttlefish on the fourth arms, they have those blanket-like fins where it shows the iridescent colors that all coleoids have this. Chromatophores can only do so much for changing the color, so they do need a little backup. And that's what these erythophores do. So when light comes down, it's going to come down, hit that skin, and it's going to bounce off. But when it bounces off, it's going to reflect colors as well. It's going to reflect those colors. And then on the third layer, we have leucophores. And uh, leucophores, they are really extraordinary cells. So they scatter full spectrum of light, which makes them appear white. So all that light that is going, all those colors is going to refract off of that cell and will appear white. And that's where that white comes from. Because as I never mentioned in the chromatophores or rhodophores, there's no white in there at all. They also reflect any filter light on them. So for example, 
if they reflect green, for example, they reflect green light if green is represented to them. And the appearance does not change when looking at it at an angle. So like the rid of force because iridescent, when you look at it from an angle, you get different colors at different angles. But like Luca force, you do not get that at all. You're only just going to get white. And since Luca force reflect filter light, they aid in color matching because they reflect little wavelengths of light. So it's a really magnificent cell, uh, truly extraordinary, one of a kind. And if the colloids did not have these cells, I don't think they would be the masters of camouflaging as they do. I don't think they would be masters of camouflaging as they are now. But now, as we head on, I want to show you guys some pictures I have drawn about retophores and leucophores. And then I'm going to show you drawing I made of how the cells would be in the layers of the colloid skin. So here we have the iridophore. So it's a, it's a really simple cell, but has a very, very important job of reflecting those different colors that the chromatophore does not have. So when that light comes down, it's gonna hit the top right there, right here. And these things, these will help reflect that light off. They're like, it, when you look online and find iridophores, they almost look like these little glass panels, which will help that reflect off. And like what I mentioned about iridophores, it will reflect that light off, but reflect those other colors and create that iridescent color. And then the leucophore. So this one's also a very simple cell, but just like the iridophore, it has a very special purpose. So we have these leucosomes that surround a whole entire cell body. So that's all what's in the cell, all what's around the cell, I mean, but in, Inside is just a nucleus, which just keeps is the main part of that cell. But these leucosomes are extremely important because they'll they are that transparent refractive granule. So when the light comes in, it'll refract all of those colors out to appear white. And so inside here, we just have that cell body, and then the main thing that makes that cell is the nucleus. And then here. Last but not least is the drawing I told you guys about earlier about the layers of the skin that I wanted to show you. So right here we have our papillae of the skin, right? And then on the bottom, this is where the chromatophores are. So you get that brown, red, black, yellow, orange. On the bottom, we will have our iridophores, which will reflect that iridescent light, but then they reflect pink, yellow, green, blue, and silver. Then at the bottom, we have those leucophores that don't, that reflect all colors, but all appear white. So revising what I said, it's actually everything I said. These cells are extremely important, have a, such a big purpose for cephalopods because if they didn't have these, they, they want to be a very successful animal at all. They would, they would be calamari. They would be getting hunted down very, they would be getting down hunted much easier from humans and also their predators. So this is a huge key factor for them because it helps them camouflage and communicate with others. And talking about communication, if they didn't have this either, I think it would be very, very difficult for these animals to have that communication with others and, and express their feelings. So it's just such an important job for cephalopods to have these. And so it's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was such a fun topic to learn about. And I hope you guys got something from this video and learned something new. It's just chromatophores are one of my favorite things of cephalopods. And it's what makes the cephalopod. So like what I said before, I hope you guys all enjoy and have an amazing day. And also, if you guys have any questions for me, please put them down in the comments. I would love to answer for them, help out as much as I can. All right, and thank you guys, and have a fantastic day.